Well, hello, YouTubers. Hey, today I found the perfect stick to make a rune walking stick. They mean things like uh, good luck, strength, energy, and, and uh, lots more. Now I'm going to use this crystal for the top of it. That'll go right on top like that. So let's get started on this project and see how it turns out. Okay, here we are in the carving booth again today. And uh, going to be carving runes today on the walking stick. So let's get started with this little Dremel tool and we'll see what it looks like. some 220, uh, try on 220 sandpaper and uh, get my vent hood away. Uh, just lightly sand it to get the, the burrs clear there and uh, any kind of sandpaper will knock that off. Next step is going to be to paint these and after we paint them, then we'll sand it again and that'll leave the paint down in the down in the room. So let's uh, let's get the acrylic out and get the painting on that. Here it is, deep purple. Buy the acrylic in these cans. The cans you get smaller bottles if you want. And uh, I buy these at Hobby Lobby most of the time. Now, just simply turn out your stick up to where you can see it and what I do is just get me a use my finger as a stop that way I know how far to dip it down in there to get the brush wet and then I just start filling it in I want to make sure I get all angles all the everything that's carved in there I don't care if I get it out of the line or not. It's more important to make sure the total carving part is covered with acrylic. And I think I got that pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna give you a close up of this after I get this side done here and uh, you'll see what I mean about not staying, not uh, not staying inside the line or the carving. That would be a that would be a task in itself. Uh, but we'll see the the end product is is going to make that really pop. Um, I can say these. If you're putting a blue, if you're putting a clear crystal on top, you can you can use uh, about any color you want. You can make black if you want. You can make white. If I put a blue crystal on top, I'd probably use blue paint of some sort. Uh, this has a lot of the crystal that's going on this has a lot of purple in it. So I'm using purple, and that's the only reason. But you can use any color. There's no restrictions on these ruins as far as meaning. Be, uh, 
pertaining to the collar. So you can use any collar you want. Now see, there's a close up. And then see I went outside the line quite a bit. So let me get that done, be back and we'll take a look at it uh, to see what it looks like after it's dried and sanded. Well, I'm gonna show you a little bit about the, the purple uh, acrylic paint that I put in the runes has dried and ready to sand. And I take a little uh, 150, you could use 180, I guess, I don't know, 100, but I use 150, don't seem to scratch it up too bad. And it cuts that acrylic right off there just using my thumb. I don't like to use the power sander for that uh, because I'll it tends to take off all of your previous stain. I just want to take a minimum amount off of this. It'll lighten it up a little bit in the area where the rooms are. But uh, you can just sand it until it looks like all the, uh, the purple is off of the wood. I take my air gun and blow that sawdust out of the carving and it'll show that bright purple again. And we're gonna see that just in a second. It's just a little bit more sanding right here. And uh, I've already did the other side. Now, you see, you can hardly see it now, but I'm gonna take the air hose here and uh, I'm just gonna blow that out of the groove. One little spot I missed right there. So it really shows up once you get it sanded. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna repaint that in there and then we'll let that dry and sand it off. And then we're gonna get started on putting our embellishment on the top. Now, as far as getting the jewel on top of the stick, I put a punch mark right in the center, visual center of this, close as we can get it. And I'll drill a hole, quarter inch hole, as straight as possible, right straight down into that stick. It helps to drill a, a pilot hole sometimes first, depending on how hard the wood is. Wow, that's going to be pretty hard. So, let's, uh, get a pilot hole going first and uh, that will make it a lot easier. I'll just throw a pilot, a little pilot right in here and then I'll pop that right in there. and put it in a half inch or better. What I do, have a quarter inch dowel, it's about an inch long, three quarters, between three quarters and an inch, and that'll go right in that hole. Wanna make sure that, uh, well that's the pilot hole right now, and I'll drill me a pilot hole. I got a, another punch mark right in the bottom, just visually, don't need to measure it close to what looks like a center to you and go straight in. And try to go straight into that. You don't have to push very hard. So that's not. Start out slow, get your drill started. And uh, that's how I do it. Now, if you want to wrap that in a cloth, you better if you put that in the vise, some say that's not really the safest way of doing it because you got your hand right there. But what I do, I get it started and it don't jump out of the hole. So we're going to get a poly hole there. Now particularly if you use a poly hole, it's safe to do this pretty much, but I wouldn't recommend it. 
put it in the vise, you know, whatever. Make sure it's whatever's safe for you. I take my safety precautions as I need them. And uh, don't, always, don't always try to copy me as far as safety goes because that might not work out for you. And I don't want anybody getting hurt saying they followed my instructions at all. Um, when you're handling a, when you're drilling holes, there's always the risk of, of, now on these wooden things, I keep my hand back here at a distance so that I got plenty of room for it. Hold it down solid and then drill your hole. Now that poly hole in there, that should drill a lot better. This is really a hard wood. I can tell that already. And I got it in there deep enough, I think. Now, we'll see if that dowel should slip in there. And to make sure that we got enough to where that'll slip in without going, as long as you have it bottoms out and you have some left, because we're gonna put fill that hole full of epoxy, just stick that in there, leave about that much sticking out, and we'll put, we're gonna show you that method trick here in a minute. Now I use two-part JB Weld. I buy this on Amazon and uh, I think it's uh, four ounce containers. I got four ounce in each one and that'll last a good while. And uh, I have mixed that in two parts. It's five minute epoxy that I use to secure these to the top of the sticks. I'll put me a couple of lines down here, wide, uh, at least one inch or better there. And uh, put my lid back on that. And then I'll do the same thing here. I'll get me a nice wide bead and get about, about an inch of that one. And that's about what I use for these. Now I want to get I can use my uh, throwaway uh, acrylic stick that I used, and I'm going to mix that up really good here. And you just make sure that you got that mixed really well. And if you do, if you got a good mix on this, it is going to harden up in five minutes to where you won't be able to to um, get it off of there. And that's what we want. And I want to make sure it's not as, you don't have to stir it as much as, as you would resin, but you still want to make sure you get it mixed good. And uh, really, I took a little shortcut because that was way in there. I'm going to get a popsicle stick. And uh, that's what it's best to use. I find a popsicle stick is is a better better mixer and uh, and it's a better applicator too once you get once you get it all mixed right. Here at least you don't have to worry about bubbles. There's there bubbles in there all right. But now, I think it's mixed well enough that what I'm gonna do is, I'll put some right in that, right in that hole, and I will stick my dowel right in there like something like that. And then I'll take a little more and I'll put it on, let some get in that hole also, and I'll cover the end of the stick really good with epoxy, that good old two-part epoxy. And if it squirts out a little bit, we're gonna cover that with a 
Um, that's going to be covered up with a what I call a paracord nest. All of my jewels set in a paracord nest. Now I got a little bit. You don't want to get any on the on your jewel. So you want to keep that wiped off there as much as possible. Now I've got that and I've got that ready. Now you can stick this right on there. And now that you want to just lay it on there, press and hold it a little bit and it's going to drip out. Um, press and hold it on there just for a minute or two and let it let it seize up on there. I've got I'm just holding pressure on it to push it down and you can see uh, once you turn it loose you can kind of see it started to solid up on there. Uh, I'm still pulling it loose. What you can do is prop it up and just let it sit for a while. And I can't get that all in camera range here. Maybe I can. Uh, see if we, if we just push that down just like that and we got it standing up. Now I want to look and check and make sure, a little piece of paper, and make sure I don't have any epoxy that's about to make a run in it because you'd have to sand it off if you did and, and uh, you'd take some of the wood with it. We don't want that. So let's, uh, it's already starting to solidify a little bit now. But like I said, it don't take five minutes and, and you can handle it. I let it go about 15 minutes before I try to wrap this and then um, and see what it looks like. I just leave it right there and quit messing with it. It'll be back as soon as that gets dry. Okay. Now, I want this about six inches long for this hand paracord hand, uh, handle here. And uh, you want about six foot per inch. I want six inches, that's 36, about 36 foot. I have that. You see a purple painted ruins, a purple and white kind of purplish color uh, jewel on the end. What am I trying to say? Uh, jewel on the end and uh, for an embellishment. And what I'm do, purple, purple, purple. So right around here, I want about 18, I want to tie this in my shoelace knot. And I want about, see, I'm going to go this way. I want to tie, uh, I want to go about 10 inches, or about 18 inches actually, stuck over. But I want plenty. So I want it to start right about there, tie that. Before I do anything else, I want to take this 18 inches and run it down, right down the stick like that. And I want it to hold it with some way or other. So hold it with a, with a tape. I will get it tight down against there and try so as to hold that snugly there. Want it right straight down there, so let me take the other one, put another piece of tape right about there, pull it sort of tight there, and we can just put this paracord wrap right over the top of it. It's not going to show and uh, got another one here, pretty snug, and put it up like that. 
Now this here, just loop it around, tie it loosely, just to keep it out of your way for a little while here. And uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, and anyway, there we go. Now with this one, I want to snug this up right here. And I want to hold it in my hand. I've showed this in other videos, but we'll go through it again. Hold this in my right hand like this. Just that, that uh, the length, the long length of cord. Just lay that in your right hand like this. Turn your hand to the left. And then you'll bring it all the way back and run it through the end. Now when you have way down the stick like this, it takes a little bit longer to, to get to where you're going. But uh, anyway, that's part of the process. Now, I want to tighten that up wherever it wants to tighten up at. Pull it tight. And then again, left uh, right hand loop and pull it up and over the end and just let it drop and pull it up and let it tighten wherever it wants to tighten up and that'll be right in there somewhere. Now again, right hand, turn it to the left Pull it up over the end of the stick, and we'll try to, as soon as I get this to where it holds, try to demonstrate that a little bit more. Now tighten it up just wherever it wants to tighten up at, and it'll get a snug up. Uh, let it, let it pull up tight as you can pull it. And uh, let it just go ahead and wrap right over that tape. And remember, you're pulling back, letting it go over to your right. I have this whole pile of thread right here, paracord right here to my right. Cup it in the right hand. Twist your hand to the left, which makes that. And I, you'll see once again, I'm going to pull this loop down and put it over the end here, like that. I'll leave a link to another video where I say paracord wrap the easy way, and that's what I call this. There's uh, various people have attempted to show this on YouTube, and uh, some of them better than the others. So. Uh, you can type paracord wrap and find this in in uh, several other places also. Now, as you can see here, that started like a curl all the way around that with an even braid with this braided tie that's going to go uh, twist all around the handle. Looks very nice. And... Uh, here again, I'm going to show you one more time, and then I'm going to stop the camera and finish it up and let you look at it. Again, over this is pull back to your right. Cup your right hand over like this. Twist to the left. And that will cover that up like, like so here, loop. Pull this back up over the end of the stick and then pull it pull it pull it loose there and pull it down see it's see how it's looped there it's not tightened not tightened up get it down to where it starts you'll see it's tightened all around there pull it tight 
and actually that's going to come out the end of your of your braid each time when it tightens up it's going to be the end of this spiral that goes around there and you tighten it up and go again it's just about as simple a knot as you can get and uh I'm going to shut down here now because uh, I've shown it in other videos. And uh, like I said, there'll be a link to that somewhere. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And then I'll show you what we do when we get up to the end. As we can see here, that nice spiral wrap all the way around that. Nice and snug all the way down. And uh, we want to just... Make sure that you can take your thumbnail and push it down. If you got any wood showing in between, shouldn't have any. I uh, got a little bit right there. I can just push it down a little bit at a time. Make sure that I've got all the wood covered. And uh, makes it nice and neat. Now, that's pretty good. Now, what I wanted to point out is, as you wrap this, when you get around, here's your pigtail loose. When you get around the spiral to where that's at, you can stop right there. But if you want a little, if you got room for another wrap, see, I, I can go around quite a bit more to, without covering up the runes. So I think I will go... That's about a hand held there. But what you have to do is stop it right where those two come together. Now, if you go another, uh, another wrap, you'll have to go all the way around to where it, it would probably cover, it would probably cover some of your engravings. So I would stop right there because you can see about how much that's going to cover from here to here. So if you go another wrap to where it comes back out again, it's going to be up into here, which will cover part of that run. So we don't want that. So let's just stop right there. And at this time, what we do is cut this off, cut the long end off, even with this other pigtail that you have. And I take my pliers and just clip it right there. And that, I don't want that to fall in the floor. Uh, my floor is dirty. Believe it or not, and I don't want to get the paracord dirty. So, there you go. Now, what we'll see is, here we go again, that's tightened up, and you got this one going underneath, this on the outside. So what we'll do is cover again, tighten the knot like that. And I put a drop, just a drop of uh, thin CA glue to keep that knot from coming untied. And I then I hit that with a little bit of accelerator. Now this is going to be my handle or my wrist strap. And what I do with that is, like usual, I will, I will go around, hold them together, and I'll go around once, twice, and you can go around three times if you want. But then that is kind of loose, like that. Then I come in from the bottom, and I stick through those loops right there. And I pull that up. Uh, but it's pulled through these three loops that you coiled around. 
kind of hard to see, but that's the slip knot that I'm after. And we will tighten that up. And what I want to do now is start the torch and I want to burn both ends of this cord. But that burning there will fix it to where it won't slip all the way through there. It goes back there and stops at the knot. And that will also help keep it from coming loose here. That's a neat looking little knot if you can if you can manage to make it there. Well, let's get around here and take a look. See what we got so far. So your handle is just about right now. And you see how that spirals around? Kind of neat where it starts. There's no knots. And when you come up here, the only knot you have is where the two ropes came out at the end, tying it all together. And that makes you... That's about five inches, but that makes you a wrist strap then that you can go in here and pretty securely hold that or to hang it with or whatever you want to do. And you can see your ruins on this, a purple with a purple rope. Now we're not quite done. On the end of this, I want to put a paracord nest for this to rest in. And uh, I'm gonna let that cure up, that uh, uh, five minute epoxy, get uh, really seated in there good. And uh, it's getting late in the day here, so I'm going to uh, put that paracord nest on there tomorrow. That will finish it up and we'll take a final look and call it a day. Okay, now it's time to put the paracord nest on it. Uh, I have uh, start out with about six foot of the of the cord, and uh, I can find the middle, just like so here, and I'll put it around here. And I've have other videos on this, but we're gonna go through it a little bit. I just tie it in a first little knot here and wrap it around on the bottom and we tie the same thing, just do once and make sure that that stays tight. Now the first one on the bottom, make sure that that knot lays down on the wood, not up here on this side. But on the wood side, we'll call that the wood side and the jewel side. Now we come back up the top. See, this one was right, the first knot, first little loop was right on the, right on the seam there. Now, next, you t do the same thing, a little slip knot, but this one's going on the jewel side. And you turn it over, and the, this one will go on the jewel side. We can get it through there. This will go on the jewel side of the paracord. Let it go as much on the jewel side as you can get. This one will go back to the to the wood. Two on the jewel. And then back to the wood. Pull it tight, keep it tight as you can. Now this one, we'll turn it over. 
This one will go on the jewel side. One on the wood, two on the jewel side. See that knot will, will stay up on the jewel side. Now it don't wanna it don't wanna stay tight, you gotta make sure after you put this loop in there that you pull it tight on the bottom again and now that's another one on the jewel side. Now we turn it over. That was two on the jewel side. And it got loose again when you turn it. And now this one will go on down on the wood side. Make, make sure that's tight. Then we'll go down on the wool, wood side. <clears throat> We go, gotta make sure that's, make sure that's tight. Now I wanna, you can stop anywhere you want now. You've got it covered up real good. And uh, what I wanna do is try to get that as tight as I can get it there. Hold that tight. Have your CA glue ready. Once you hold that real tight there, put a dab of CA glue. I put an accelerator on it. Now that'll hold it tight. And then what you wanna do, what I always do then, is cut, you look at where you're gonna tuck it under one of the other strands and uh, I will cut it generally about three eighths of an inch is what you cut off. And, uh, and let's see, that will go under that one. Now, you see how much I have cut off there, left just a little, just a little on each side. We're going to tuck that, uh, take a small screwdriver is what I use, tuck that end under one of these other strands so the end don't show, it's all bound up just right then. Okay, the main thing here is when you're tucking the ends under, the white inner core will be trying to show up somewhere and just make sure you tuck it back in and get it all tucked in there. And you see now, when you roll it around, you really don't see any knots or anything of that sort. So we're all done. Let's take a better look at this stick. One last look and and, uh, and finish this project up. Well, I think we're about done with this project. Got the, uh, the rune walking stick, close up of the handle, the wrist wrap. And this is uh, really the accent of the whole thing. I'm, Got it standing on the ground now. It's about mouth level here. Uh, quite comfortable if you want to stand, kind of hold yourself up like this. Very sturdy stick. It's uh, it's about uh, an inch and a half at the top, about one inch at the bottom. I'll tell you what, nothing left to say, but I'll see you in the next video.